Um, let's get started. Uh, I, first of all, I'd like to introduce Eric Harvey. He is the Director of Data Science at MMS Holdings and Margarita Mayer. Uh, she is uh, pharmacovigilance. Um, she runs the pharmacovigilance department uh, and I'm Associate Director of Data Science. So together we're going to uh, present uh, the process for curation of these drug labels. So we, we found um, uh, kind of a weakness in the system for providing drug label information. And that's what we're gonna, we're gonna present to you guys today. So uh, let me give that over to Eric so he can talk to the first slides. Um, I think he's starting, Eric, right? Yep, I'm all set. So thank you, Chris. Okay. You can flip to the next slide. Sure. All right, so first of all, an overview of why we're here. So um, in the other talk that we just had was a very good segue into this, because I think this, this um, that we're going to talk about, this drug label dictionary could serve as a, as a valuable input to that process. So um, first, we're going to introduce product drug labels. And um, for those of you who may not be as familiar with them, we're going to talk about label content differences between the EU and FDA mainly. Um, we're going to talk about signal safety signal detection, and this is all at a very high level uh, as, as background material because we really want to get into the meat of our presentation and introduce the need for a standard drug label ontology. Ontology is just a fancy word for dictionary. Then we're going to talk about the data flow and data curation steps that might be needed to support and create that ontology. And then we'll wrap up and take any questions. All right, next slide, Chris. There you go. All right, so introduction to project product drug labels. So drug labels are really intended to provide healthcare practitioners with information to make prescribing decisions. Um, they're not um, really intended for post-marketing safety surveillance, which is what um, one of the applications we're using them for in pharmacovigilance. So the information provided to patients is um, arguably complete, but it's not in an easily understood format for the patients, and particularly not in a very easily understood format for machine-readable um, input. These dictionaries, or these drug labels, are regularly updated by pharmaceutical companies. Um, they contain the most currently available information on drug safety profiles. They are really the, the primary, the gold standard source for anticipated um, safety profiles for drugs. So sources of these data typically include um, your usual suspects here, clinical trials, post-authorization safety studies, and then post-marketing spontaneous reporting. This is things like the FDA adverse event reporting system that many of you will be familiar with. All right, so here's just a little bit about labels. And we were gonna put a label, an example label here, but many of them are quite verbose. They go on literally for pages and pages. They contain lots of unstructured text, embedded tables, sometimes embedded figures. Um, you can always already see the problem um, to make these machine readable. Um, the information is in there somewhere, but sometimes it's very difficult to tease out. And that's typically done by pharmacovigilance professionals in a manual um, way at the moment. There's a variety of formats that drug labels can come in. Um, they're all um, fully downloadable. We'll give you some links at the end of this presentation if you wanna go and download some. But um, the typical format and probably the preferred format is XML. Um, they also come, depending on when the product was approved and when the drug label was introduced, they, they also may be in an image format or even in PDFs. So, so a few different formats available there. All right, I'm gonna hand it over here to my colleague, Margarita Mayer. So as Chris said, she's our medical director of um, pharmacovigilance and drug safety. Thank you, Eric. Um, in our research, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. So in our research, we mostly were uh, focused on uh, major uh, regions, uh, FDA region and European Union region and compared drug labels for those regions. What we have found is that uh, United States uh, product drug labels, um, um, all, um, the, uh, all um, uh, 
regulation which describes adverse reactions which should be uh, reported in drug labels is section number six. And uh, what FDA allows, FDA allows use of best available data. For example, if we are in clinical trials, have a clinical trial with placebo control group or a control group with other medication, FDA allow to use only uh, data from uh, placebo control clinical trials if they represent safety profiles. So all adverse drug reactions which will be uh, also uh, observed during the uh, uh, the drug control trials will be excluded from drug labels. Uh, for European Union, uh, they actually more uh, harmonized and uh, uh, the use summary of product characteristics, document summary of product characteristics, sections uh, 4.8, which will be describe undesirable effects. And uh, uh, actually, European Union EMA uh, um, don't allow to exclude any data. All adverse drug reactions which were observed for particular medications during the clinical trial and, and post-marketing, they should be included in summary of product characteristics. They will be presented in structured way of the table by system organ class, uh, medrapreferi terms or lowest level terms and um, will represent more complete uh, profile of adverse drug reactions observed during the uh, clinical trials and post-marketing. Uh, next slide, please. So for safety signal detection, what we uh, we have found that uh, um, not uh, not have found that uh, we can receive data in structured and unstructured way. Structured way, it is typical pharmacovigilance way of uh, uh, submission of uh, individual case safety report to spontaneous, spontaneous reporting system like FIRES or UDRA Vigilance or other reportability system. And it can be unstructured data as real world data, social media, etc. For uh, monitoring of safety, uh, post-marketing safety, especially of uh, uh, drug safety profile, we would need consistency in baseline format. And baseline format is uh, for us is drug safety label. So what have been observed until present moment with what we should compare. Uh, utilizing real world data uh, sources can actually boost uh, clinical um, uh, signal detection uh, processes and uh, uh, because most of people now reporting adverse drug reactions uh, into social media like twitter reddit etc and signal detections um, uh, algorithm will require for us all uh, safety data observed until this moment included in baseline document like drug safety label or summary of product characteristics how it will help us in post-marketing signal detection that actually machine learning algorithm can help us to uh, analyze a huge amount of information which will be received from real world data however uh, the more effective baseline information we have the more it is adjustable for multi um, uh, multitasking uh, uh, team for signal uh, detection, the, the better results we will receive afterwards. Next slide, please. And uh, so what we have found uh, or what we are trying to, uh, to, to develop at the um, present moment is to build the bridge between uh, drug sa safety labels, which are uh, main uh, main uh, actually um, aim of drug, sa uh, drug safety labels, is to provide information for uh, safety for physician, medical doctor as prescription information. However, this information should be also built for usage of multidisciplinary teams like uh, uh, PV professionals and also it should be linked to uh, 
dictionaries and standard terminologies like Madra and Hudrak dictionary. Volume of information, why it is so important? Because volume of information we are receiving on a daily basis from real-world data will be impossible for human being to analyze it effectively. And we need uh, help of uh, machine learning algorithm. However, machine for machine learning alg algorithm, we should have some kind of uh, structured information which can be used further for multidisciplinary team for uh, signal detection. And we believe that technology can help us in that. And I'm passing uh, now to... Yeah, so Margarita, I think I'll take this one, yeah. if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So let, yeah. let, now we see that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of unstructured data within these data labels and, and labeling information. And, uh, and what I, I just want to show you guys here, uh, basically a high level flow where we have a tool that we use for automated, automating signal detection, right? And producing safety analysis uh, driven by real world data um, down in the corner, in the right corner. Uh, along the left, we see all of the different data that's available to us. So we, uh, we answered the FDA challenge and that's where this came from, the, the FUSE FDA challenge earlier this year. And so uh, how can we use real world data um, for safety signal detection? So we took some social media data and um, we built a, an API into the Twitter database, you know, and, and, and took data almost real time, uh, lots and lots of data, right? And then we use machine learning to extract that data uh, and, and create, um, uh, try to, to, to do natural language processing and machine, machine learning to, to learn um, which of these tweets were adverse events. People love, love to talk about stuff in tweets, right? So if you can see along the top between the real world data, the social media data and the human prescription drug labels, um, uh, this is a lot of information, right? And healthcare professionals, they prescribe the medication, right? And then people consume the medication, right? And then there's some feedback. There's like a couple channels that we can go, right? Sometimes if there's adverse reactions, people will call the number they'll dial into the FDA and, and start filling the FAERS database, right? Other times, they don't do that. Um, they just talk about it in tweets. So that the idea of uh, more real-time data, using real-world data to analyze trends um, and, 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 you know, to, to, to see, you know, how, what, what people are talking about in social media, um, that can help our pharmacovigilance experts if we can use that data somehow. Now, the the, the data from FAERS is, is, you know, quarterly and it goes back, you know, X number of years, however you want to look at that data, but it's it's not real time. We can find in basic real time what real world data is available and what kind of sentiments we're seeing with that. Now, when you, when you look at the orange book, and you look at the Medra and the Who drug, you know, how does all this fit together? There's thousands of drugs in the FDA Orange Book. And so what are we trying to do? We're trying to go, and, and what we did for the FUSE FDA challenge was we took TNF inhibitors and we piloted this process, right? So we went in and we, we, we did some curation and we did some coding and created this ontology, this machine readable dictionary that we could use to automate the safety signal detection. So at the core of this whole talk is this need for this good structured data that then companies can analyze that data when they're trying to, um, to, to shorten the amount of time that pharmacovigilance takes to evaluate the safety signals within the data. So that's this is at a high level. Now, let me walk you through in the next slide, and I've got uh, a few minutes here. Um, so what 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 is this dictionary? Okay, so what what does it take to do this, right? So um, at along the bottom of the screen, you see kind of like what's going on. We're extracting data. We're going to store it temporarily. We're going to abstract. We're going to prepare some analysis data. We're going to validate it, and then we're going to publish it. This is your typical data science type 
uh, flow, right? So uh, in detail then, we're gonna get the latest FDA data labeled, the label data from all of the sources, right? Um, we're gonna create uh, some sort of coding from this data, but we know that this data is unstructured, right? So this data, this data that we have, um, it has to be into a, put into a format then where we can actually perform some auto coding or some manual coding. So we're gonna to have to extract that unstructured data and develop a, a tool so that we create a structured ontology, almost like a dictionary, right? And then from that dictionary match to these other dictionaries to, to get drug names uh, and to get adverse event names. So uh, what we're gonna do is um, from, from the auto coding, and the manual coding, then we can do uh, a set of, you know, validation and make sure everything's working and then create this structured label uh, dictionary in, a, in some sort of data repository. So, so those are the steps. So it kind of flows, you know, where we take this data and in the FDA labels, we know it's, you know, there's 99 pages of information out there, right? And it's, it's, it's very unstructured. Um, labels are inconsistent from you know the past you know there's a lot of information uh there's better information from the ema from uh information there but at the very end we need something that we can use programmatically and this is this is how we uh how we plan to use it so uh so that is basically the process um and just to just to show you like how it can be used um, in the FDA challenge, uh, you can you can look you can look back and you can you can actually pull our presentation. I don't want to go and explain all this stuff to you, but um, basically, um, what we're looking for are signals, and we have a signal strength uh, where we have an average or a weak signal strength. There's a signal there for these different drugs, right? Um, if you look in the top table, right? And so. Um, Within a product summary, you know, there's rare, very rare, uncommon. Um, the, these are, uh, these are, uh, they tell us like what basically how, how many of these adverse events, these adverse drug reactions that we see, um, uh, should should result in some sort of signal, right? So if we have very rare events and we see that there are some events showing up, maybe not in FAERS data or maybe in social media data, you know, then we'll look to back to the FAERS data and we'll do a comparison. And so we'll look to see, uh, was there a signal? Was it present in FAERS? Is it present in, um, in the social media data or vice versa? And it helps direct the work of the pharmacovigilance experts to go look at these things. Um, it can save a lot of time. So. Uh, the signal detection dashboard kind of shows, uh, you know, some information where um, uh, basically kind of, you know, the why behind the signal, where should the pharmacovigilance people start to analyze the data. Uh, when we're looking at the FAERS data, um, uh, this is very structured data. It's, it's, it's presenting quarterly. We can do exact analyses. We have... Uh, you know, all the data at our disposal. Uh, in this case, we did some measures of disproportionality. We're looking for a signal, right? And we can see based on the values, there's no signal for this particular for coma, right? But so so there's really not, you know, it's not a signal here, but we saw in social media where we picked up a signal. So there's a disparity, right? So now pharmacovigilance goes and starts looking into the cases of coma and they can do some case you know, dive into those cases and figure out what's going on. So it, this stuff is not possible unless we have that labeling information um, that we can use when we're evaluating the social media data in order to look for signal detection. So uh, it's really important to have that data worked into the processes. And maybe your companies may have a similar product or similar um, you know, similar methodology for determining signals, but you still, you, you need that label information. So, uh, so in this talk here, we talked about um, the primary application is in pharmacovigilance, right? But other applications are possible. If we have this data 
it's organized, it's um, available, it's freely available to, to companies, right? Um, then you can, it doesn't have to be a, a, an exact tool that we showed you here. It can be used uh, in, uh, you know, in other ways at your companies. You know, it's, it's limited by your imagination, right? Currently, we're working on this drug label ontology. We did this for, uh, for the TNF inhibitors. We, so basically, we have a drug class, and within that drug class, we've uh, organized all of these, uh, the, these uh, and coded these adverse drug reactions from the labels. So that information is um, like, you know, it was unstructured. Now we have a structure, and we can actually utilize this going forward. So uh, really important. Um, but but it, it's also important to know that when you're matching to these dictionaries, so we're matching to the MEDRA dictionary for for the adverse drug reactions or the WHO drug dictionaries for the labels to get to get some other information like drug class and and to group and uh, and, and things. But we have to strip that out because um, because you know if, unless you have a license, you can't use that the MEDRA or the WHO drug coding, right? The, the all the other coded fields. So. There are license limitations, so we would, what we would expect in this ontology then is like, um, like uh, the lowest, the lowest level term that might not come from the dictionary, but would match to the dictionary, right? So you can match and pull all those dictionary fields, whatever you need for for your purposes. So once we've created this ontology, and we're talking about the entire FDA Orange Book, and we're going to go one class at a time. Uh, it, at some point, it's going to be current, right? But then, at some point, it's going to have to be updated. There are going to be a series of, you know, new drugs and 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 new adverse events that and label updates and all that, right? We're just a small company. We can't. We're one company that we can't. We can't possibly do all that. So, the idea is maybe uh, crowdsourcing. So maybe we maybe we create a fuse working group. You know, maybe that's the that's the way we go. Maybe we go to CDISC or we go to to Medra or we go to some other um, yeah, organization and we say this is needed, right? This is an ontology that's needed. So um, hopefully, with enough people working on it or the right people working on it, we can keep this updated and keep it useful, right? So uh, it, a, a very useful ontology that enables many things. The process that we demonstrated here was within the FUSE Data Science Post-Marketing and Drug Safety Surveillance Challenge. This was uh, presented uh, back in March uh, when we were, we were going to present in Orlando, but we, uh, we had these Innovation Fridays. So if you're, if you're looking for these presentations, or basically any of the presentations from those Innovation Fridays, uh, yeah, just uh, go onto the FUSE website and navigate through uh, I, I think you can just hit the search and just type Innovation Friday and you'll see that. So um, so that that's the, the end of our um, presentation here. Uh, we've got some useful links here for you. So if you want to see what some of the, the labels look like, click on these links. Uh, you can see some of the, you know, the actually the, the laws, you know, the, the, the requirements, the regulations right here. And then you can see uh, uh, the challenge, yeah. If you click on the challenge, you can see we actually we actually published our uh, uh, innovation challenge solution. It's the the last link on the on the page here. So you can click on that if you want to see what drug safety surveillance looks like. If you want to test your favorite TMF inhibitor and see what people are talking about it. Uh, yeah, feel free. And if you have any questions, you know you can you can use the Fuse app and and just ping us with the Fuse app or uh, just get in touch with us. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, everybody. Great, great presentation. Very interesting. Um, as mentioned earlier, and also in the chat box, if you have questions uh, for the MM, 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 MMS team, uh, feel free to drop them into the questions box or send them by the Fuse um, uh, app as well. 